All rise. Honorable court is now in session. The Judge Robert C. Keesler presiding. David. David. Sorry. David C. Keesler presiding. But I'll go with Robert. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a seat, please. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is a, an honor and a treat for me. Uh, I'm David Kiesler. I'm a United States Magistrate Judge for the Western District of North Carolina, and I'm greatly honored to preside at this special proceeding today uh, on behalf of the entire court family our federal court family, including all of our judges and our hardworking and wonderful staff. I'd like to welcome you, both those of you here in the courtroom and those who are joining us remotely today. Um, speaking of our judges, I do want to make a special acknowledgement of a couple of judges who are present here in court today, U.S. District Judge Ken Bell and our Chief Bankruptcy Judge, Laura Beyer, both of whom practice law with our honoree today in their past careers. And also a uh, senior U.S. District Judge Richard Voorhees, who couldn't be with us today, but who is a member of the 1963 class at Davidson College, graduating class of our honoree today. He wasn't able to be here today, but wanted to be remembered to the family. Um, one housekeeping item I wanted to mention, I think it may be unnecessary, but if you're joining us online today, we're delighted, but would ask that you make sure you're on mute um, unless you were speaking. We're excited if you're getting a FedEx delivery, but we don't want to hear your dog's reaction. That will improve the experience for all of us. So now in a continuation of a wonderful tradition of our bar, today we gather together to recognize and celebrate the service and life of one of our number, Boyd Cleveland Campbell, Jr. This memorial session of court is a time when the brothers and sisters of our bar pay homage to the life and times of one of our profession, of one who has shared this unique discipline and privilege that binds us all together. Today, we recognize that life and those achievements as a matter of public record and for the sake of our historic and corporate memory. Uh, before I go any further, I do want to welcome um, Boyd's family, uh, his wife, Frances Campbell. Frances, where are you? There she is. Also, their daughter, Margaret Campbell. Margaret, thank you so much for being here. Before I call on others, um, I do want to mention that it's a particular honor for me to preside today because my wife Susan and I know the Campbells. For a short time, uh, Boyd and I overlapped at what was then Smith Helms Mollison Moore. Our daughters, now 23 and 21, Francis, attended the preschool at First Presbyterian Church where Francis was a beloved teacher. We've attended church with Francis and Boyd for many years at First Presbyterian. This past week, I talked to several of you out there, including Bob Cordell and Brad Cutro, about um, Boyd. Um, Boyd was, to put it uh, mildly, a very gifted lawyer, a very, very fine person, and he is deeply missed. And so, I look forward to spending this time together remembering him and what he has meant to us and what we have learned from him. At this time, I want to recognize my friend Brad Cutro, partner at uh, McGuire Woods, for a presentation on behalf of the Memorials Committee. Thank you, Your Honor, and may it please the court. I'm Brad Cutro. I'm here today in my capacity as a member of the Mecklenburg County Bar Memorials Committee. And with the court's permission, I'd like to use the lectern and, and have our presenter, Stephanie Briggs Evan, also use the lectern and face the gallery during the proceedings. Please. So again, uh, welcome everybody on behalf of the Mecklenburg County Bar. Um, 
we are glad everyone is able to gather here today. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us, and and I'll also give Francis a moment to uh, to say her thanks uh, to everyone. Francis. I just want to also important both professionally and personally, and it means that you're here. For about seven decades now, the Mecklenburg County Bar has uh, conducted these memorial sessions of court uh, for recently deceased members, taking the opportunity to remember and celebrate their lives, as we will today for BC. As far as we can determine, we are the only bar in the country that holds these memorial sessions of court. Uh, we're proud of this tradition and the role these sessions play in preserving the history of our bar. Uh, today, Stephanie Briggs Evans will present a resolution honoring Boyd C. Campbell Jr. That resolution will be presented to the court and the filed resolution will be included in the records of this court and, and maintained along with the other memorial resolutions in its permanent records. The resolution will also be posted on the bar's website and we are able, thanks to technology, to be live streaming today and there will be a recording of the of the memorial session of court that will be available to the family and uh, and on the bar's website i believe um, before i turn things over to stephanie i just want to say from a personal perspective i first got to know boyd as a first year summer law clerk um, at what was then helms mullis and johnston uh, later became his law partner uh, for for a lot of years and i can just say that i was always grateful for his wise counsel for his wisdom for his insight uh sometimes delivered acerbically uh, and just for his presence for so many years in our life together at the law firm so um, i'm glad to have this chance particularly to remember boyd uh, and with that i'll turn the proceedings over to stephanie good morning, good morning. welcome Please the court. I'm Stephanie Briggs Evans and a partner at McGuire Woods. It is an honor and privilege to reflect upon the life and legacy of Boyd Cleveland Campbell Jr. A member of the Mecklenburg County Bar for over 40 years and a friend and colleague to many of us gathered here today who passed away peacefully on December 12, 2020, surrounded by his family. Boyd, or BC, to his friends, was born on December 1st, 1941 in Abington, Virginia, the eldest of six children. BC was a proud 1963 graduate of Davidson College, a 1966 graduate of the University of Virginia School of Law. BC served two years of active duty in the United States Army, attaining the rank of captain in 1968. After a successful career as a young lawyer in Concord, North Carolina, where he captured most of the major corporate clients in just four years, he moved his practice to Charlotte to Smith Helms Mullis and Moore, which became Helms Mullis and Wicker and then McGuire Woods. BC was accomplished in representing client, public and private companies in mergers and acquisitions, securities, the regulation of financial institutions, debt finance, and general corporate matters. BC was a brilliant lawyer who exhibited never ending kindness and caring for all family, friends, colleagues, and total strangers. He understood with precision legal issues as well as the business concerns affecting clients. He had the amazing ability to take a complex legal issue and break it down so that clients and colleagues could easily understand it. He was a trusted advisor to many clients and was a go-to person for tough legal questions. He was nearly always the smartest person in the room, but he never let on or made anyone feel inferior. Beyond his brilliant legal mind, BC was a tremendous human being. The blue couch in his office was served as a resting spot for debating a legal issue or for talking about life. BC cared about people while he challenged young associates to think analytically, write with precision, and express themselves clearly and succinctly, he also never set up an associate to fail or flounder indefinitely 
with the difficult and seemingly unanswerable problem. He made sure that associates had nourishment and that they safely got to their cars late at night. He regularly checked in with associates and colleagues just to find out how they were doing. If there was an issue legal or personal to which he could lend a hand, he would be there before even being asked. His sage counsel was sought not only by clients, but by those of us in the firm for both legal and personal issues. He was a great lawyer, but he never lost his humanity. BC was generously supportive of his family. BC helped with the care of his brothers and sisters and even diverted money from his army pay to support them. BC married Frances Ann Campbell on May 22, 1982, and their daughter Margaret, the light of his life, was born on September 17, 1983. BC cherished his family, often deferring affectionately to Mrs. Campbell and happily enduring Margaret's summer swim meets in his lawyerly shirt and tie. An avid outdoorsman, BC enjoyed skiing out west, running and swimming. He traveled with clients, colleagues, and families on adventures to various states and countries. He also ran with colleagues, during which time he shared about the city of Charlotte, the firm, and life in Charlotte. After taking up swimming, he frequently swam at the Mecklenburg County Aquatic Center um, very early in the morning, stopped to grab coffee and breakfast, and was in the office most days before other attorneys had arrived for the day. BC was also an avid reader and collector of fine pottery. BC often could be seen walking to or from the library across from the firm with a book in hand. BC's office had an impressive display of pottery that he collected from various artists, and there was a story behind each piece. BC's most cherished possession in his office, though, were pictures of Margaret and himself that he commissioned as a Christmas gift to Francis. He beamed the year he had those made, and they were proudly displayed for all to see. A man of quiet faith, BC was a 35-year member of First Presbyterian Church. His office window overlooked First Presbyterian Church, and he would observe the activities taking place there, including when Francis would be assisting with carpool for the weekday school. BC has touched so many lives and made them richer by his presence. He graciously welcomed so many of us into his life and left none of us unchanged. The world has lost an amazing and extraordinary human being. While BC has finished his course, a course well tread. He has left an indelible print on so many of us, and for that, we are grateful. BC is survived by his wife, Frances, his daughter, Margaret, and her husband, Matt, his siblings, Betsy and her husband, Joe, Henry and his wife, Olga, Paige and her husband, Terry, and Anne and her husband, Rich, as well as nine nieces and nephews. From a personal standpoint, it was truly an honor and privilege to work and know BC. I often remarked if BC ever left the firm, I would be following him out the door to flip off the lights. I'm grateful for his life, even the late nights and weekends when I had to work on a project for him. He was, he is and was a remarkable human being and will be greatly missed. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Well done. One of the um, wonderful features of this tradition is that um, it's also a part of these ceremonial occasions that folks who come um, will make additional comments. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to uh, make some further remarks about our friend Boyd? Mr. McKeithen. Sitting here beside Boyd called Boyd. Uh, he's got he had his hand. Uh, Herb and I decided, as young as he is, we'd defer to him. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all may want to leave if multiple pages. Get to him. <laughs> got me a little concerned. Uh, he's a courthouse guy himself. He used to talk in. He's hard to quit. 
want to make one observation about Boyd, and I think it says a lot about him. One, we don't know what his name is. It's either BC or it's Mac. But boy, I've never known which one. Secondly, that when we convinced him to come over from Arthur Hart in the Mills, he brought a stable of clients with him, which is really very interesting. And he brought a, a client that was a coffee manufacturer. Coffee. He brought a client that ran a telephone company. He brought a client that ran a shoe distribution company. He brought a client who ran a bank. And we kept all those clients. It's pretty amazing. And think about this very, um, the very industries he brought with him. And then we cast him in this role. When Bill Johnson left, I went to Florida. Bernard went AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> Placing him in charge of NCNB Corporation. Uh, the, the corporation, not the bank. We still have that client to this day. He was a Marco guy. He was a go to lawyer, mm -hmm. and we miss him. Now you can take over. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some notes here, but that doesn't mean I'm going to talk about all of them. Mr. Corder, you want to come up to the uh, podium? Just here, fine right here, Judge. He <laughs> <laughs> wants to come up there. Oh, I'm in here. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Cordell. Here at home up there. I want to take the off head. While Mr. Cordell is uh, making the trip, I'll uh, I'll share um, while he's gathering his thoughts that Mr. Cordell and I are good friends and live on the same street. He's about a hundred feet from our house, and he looks a lot better than he did at nine o'clock this morning in his t-shirt, standing in his front yard. <laughs> Clean up pretty good, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first off, you may not know how Boyd got three names, but I do. I was a freshman with Boyd at uh, at Davidson. We were on the same hall dormitory freshman year, 1959. His parents and family called him Mac. Now I don't know why, but they did. Uh, he got to Davidson as Boyd and then became BC because it was Boyd Cleveland Campbell. And we gave most freshmen a nickname of some kind and his was BC. And that stayed with him the, the rest of his life, I think. Uh, Boyd, after Davison days, uh, was like most of us up there, Linwood and others, and Lloyd all had ROTC commissions to go in the Army. Uh, we were both deferred uh, through law school because Vietnam wasn't very hot in 1963. Boyd went to Virginia. Now, Boyd was not a big drinking man, and everybody else at Virginia was, uh, as some of you know. And I used to stop by. I was at NYU, and I would stop by Charlottesville coming home on the train. You could, in those days, you could get off the train and spend the night and get back on the next day. And I would go by and see Boyd and uh, his friends, and we had a whole bunch of classmates up there. And they said it was much different from Davidson because there was so much drinking going on up there. And he said Boyd didn't drink much, but he learned real quick that if he didn't put his bottle, whatever he was drinking, on Friday night, he would go to bed early. If he didn't put it under his pillow, there wouldn't be anything in it the next morning. <laughs> so he did that. When Boyd got out of the Army in August of 68, uh, we had planned to go to Europe, stay a couple of months at least. And I joined Helms Mullis in July of 68 on the clear understanding that I was going to Europe with Boyd. And we were going to stay at least a couple of months. And that was okay. Convinced Larry Dagenhart of that. And that was good. So Boyd came down and met with everybody at Helms Mullis and we talked, talked with him. And he'd Larry, you know, Boyd wants to buy a car in Europe. He wants to buy a red MG. 
convertible. And he has no job yet and no money to speak of in his army money. Is there anybody around to lend him some money? He says, sure, Jerry Thompson down at NCNB. Uh, so Boyd went down there and Jerry lent him the money to buy his car and made the arrangements to ship the money over. And he was so happy with that. And Jerry said, look, Boyd, you don't have to pay any of this back until you get a, get back to Charlotte, get back to North Carolina and get a job making some money. And uh, you don't find many bankers that'll do that to you today. Uh, now, Ken Bell and some of the others have made, and your good friend, Judge Bob Conrad, make fun of the Davidson guys, how close they are to each other things. Uh, Boyd and I touring Europe in that red MG convertible, and we're down on the French Riviera riding along the highway there, uh, and we pass some kid out thumbing, and we get about a half mile down the road, and I say, boy, that guy has a little Davison sweatshirt. <laughs> Boyd said, no way. I said, well, let's turn around and go back, and so we did, and we found a guy that was over uh, with the Davidson Junior Pro Junior Year Broad Program in Montpellier, in France, and you know, that was the only place they had a, a Junior Year Board Program at that time. And he said, "Gee, uh, who's who?" You know, we said, "Who you taking? Who's with you there?" They said, "Oh, George Laban is over there." And Linwood, I'm sure you uh, may remember Dr. Laban. He taught Greek and Latin and all kinds of things that Boyd and I had never had. <laughs> never wanted to have. But we knew him. I mean, Davison was a small place. You knew everybody and you knew George Laban. So we drove on into Montpellier and uh, George was so happy to see us because his family wasn't over there. He put us up for a week and told us where to go and this great, great food. Now, when we got back from Europe, Boyd went looking for a job <clears throat> and he found one in Concord, Hartzell, Hartzell and Mills. Their senior partner at the time was Bill Mills. And Bill was a chitty old guy in some ways that had a uh, leg missing from the war and other things, but he was also the in charge of the North Carolina Board of Law Examiners. The worst thing to happen to any of us, having to go for the Board of Law Examiners. And so he called me and asked me about Boyd, and I said, he's great, can't, top notch. And he said, well, Bob, I want to hire him because he finished second or third in the bar exam back in 1966. Uh, nobody knew that, I mean, because they kept that very close and they never told anybody. How, uh, how they finished in the bar exam. But that shows you how bright he was. Uh, I was really pleased when Lloyd McKeithen pushed for Boyd to come over from Concord. And he did a great job once he got to what was still Helms Mullis at that time. Now, <clears throat> Lloyd and I've had a interest in a house at Kiowa 30, 40 years. I don't know, Francis, you may. It was before Francis, let me put it, put it that way. <laughs> and as many of you were at their, their wedding over at First Pres, and when the preacher turned around and said, uh, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Campbell, I'll introduce you, Mr. and Mrs. Campbell. It was the loudest applause I've ever heard in a church. It showed how much people cared for Boyd and for Francis that way. Now, when Margaret came around, she was the apple of Boyd's eye, clearly. He uh, clearly loved her, thought a great deal of her. And she went off to college up in the mountains and somehow in there she became, as I recall, a vegetarian, not a vegan, but a vegetarian maybe. And 
deployed without her asking him, said, Margaret, I want to support you in that. I'm going to become a vegetarian too. And so that's one reason he kept his weight down. <laughs> he became hard to live with for a while. <laughs> Stayed a vegetarian that way. Of course, Margaret, he was also proud of her. She ran the public health nurse in Orange County. And she was in charge basically of the uh, response of the pandemic. And he was really happy when he found out she had had to go talk to Roy Williams, basketball coach at Carolina, and straighten him out about what they were supposed to be doing. It's the only time anybody's ever straightened Roy Williams out. Uh, my wife says about Boyd that describe him, he said, well, he's very nice. He's very kind. He's very calm. He's calm. He's a great guy. And he's very, very smart. I think we all know that. to be here to speak for Boyd or on his behalf uh, in this memorial service. And thank you, Francis and Mark. Thank you, Mr. Cordell. That was fantastic. Others? I realize following Mr. Cordell is a daunting task. <laughs> Please do not hesitate if you'd like to say something. Mr. Hazlett. That's OK. Uh, I'll just say one thing about a couple things. About, so I, I guess I was associated with 1988. A year later, I think you came in. Everything was so secret. I tell you. So they said, well, we got this boy of Concord that's coming over. <laughs> well, and then we were doing all these bond deals that boy had helped finesse the first union national bank and let us see bond deals all over the country. So boy made him do bond deals. So that was great. But, and Brad reminded me of something the other day. And yeah, boy, I guess he thought I was competitive or something. <laughs> 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 he saw a things. So, so he, he we closed the bond. He was closing the bond. We had a bunch scheduled. They, um, I'm sitting in my office. I've got one on like the next week. And Boyd comes in, puts the documents down, and said, got it done in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> He knew that what that was going to mean. He said, I had to do one in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but he was playing. <laughs> he had done it an So I said, okay, all right. I got one next week. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, next week we got in there and uh, <laughs> I think I came in. I said, I got to do it 45 minutes. And so he said, all right, I'll get one in 30. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, the thing about him was he was a master of the undertaking too. Like 1985 or something. Like that. We had these privately insured savings and loans. We're all going from what I do. And uh, commissioner of the savings and loan administrator, what I called Larry and said, we need you, your firm to come down there and help us provide funds and we're going to provide some bailout funds for these savings and loans. So Larry comes in. Says you guys, we need to go to Raleigh. We had an emergency, so we get in the car, drive down to Raleigh, and we get there. We don't really know what we're supposed to be doing. And uh, we're supposed to wear our suits. And Larry's talking to the commissioner, and they go in a room, and then he comes, he comes back out, and uh, uh, he kind of tells us what we're do. I looked at the boy, and I said, "I guess we're here to save the Salem's Alliance of North Carolina." He looks right back at me and says. Yeah, two unlikely looking heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
in the last one that I heard, I went on the speaker to do back the previous day. I guess we're just trying to merge the So the idea was we'll get these lawyers, they'll go for a week out to Colorado to ski. And uh, so we got with some of the more guys. We all went out there and had a good time. So we were skiing one day uh, in the winter door. And uh, we kept going by this run, this sign. It was like a, a black diamond run straight ahead. But we were always turned. And every time we'd get to that, we'd stop. You know, before we made that turn, he'd say, you want to go down? And I said, not really. <laughs> He said, okay, so we go down all day. And then finally, the last time, he said, you want to go down? I said, yeah, let's go down. Okay. And I got tired of him playing with me. So let's go down. So we take off, and it was very steep. And I knew the only way I was going to be down, but I didn't look back. So I went down. But I could have my mom look back up. I can't see. He's nowhere. I'm there for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I can't. Finally, I see this. Person coming out of the trees, you know, carrying the skis. And he's apparently <laughs> busted the shoulder. <laughs> he came on the ground. But he, like, I'm sorry, I felt so guilty about that. And I said, but you know what? You're, you're, it's your own fault. You're the man. <laughs> was a great lawyer. Very, everything Stephanie said was right. Everything Al Cole said, the Lord was right. Uh, he was really smart. And, uh, Turned NCMB over to him temporarily hmm. while we looked for the securities order. Never got to, I guess, Viola got. Uh, but uh, he did a great job. You know, I used to come into him and say, You don't know anything about it. <laughs> he said, Yeah, I do. You know, so we had, we had a good time. He was a great lawyer, <laughs> smart, and he could manage clients better than anybody. The last thing I'll say is, I was, his client relations were so good. I can't remember which one of those clients he brought. Concord, but I also never forget this. We were on the 20, we 28th floor of their NCD Plaza. I'm coming in for lunch, and Debbie Miller, our secretary, she didn't know who I was. And so she answers this phone call and says, Okay. And we back then, you push the button, and then she tell you who to call. Her. And she said, Mr. Campbell, uh, Judge Warren Berger's on the line for you. <laughs> I walked out and heard that. And said, it was his friend, Roy Davis, the lawyer in Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hazlett. Others? Well, I, I may be the only person who got to work with Roy at the firm and then as a client at, at NCMB and at NCMB and all the issues. But, um, I, for those of us who joined at the firm at the same time, was right in the summer. I think we accepted our offer. Johnson or Helms, Mollis, and Wicker, I lose track of what was what at what time. And, and they merged with the Greensboro, the Greensboro office, where there were seven of us, including Serbia and Brad, who went to sort of the dark side of the house litigation. I think the rest of us stayed on the corporate side of the house and had the, the honor of working with Boyd. So um, he really was, as Stephanie said, um, very caring about all of us. Um, they treated us all. I mean, he was smart and he was wonderful and he taught us the law and he didn't make you feel so stupid. Even if you asked certain things, there are no stupid questions. There were, but, but he never made you feel like there were any. Um, did some municipal finance and some securities work. He did know securities law, he learned it. Um, I didn't realize he didn't know it. Um, but he, I, I do remember um, in those days too, we worked Saturdays, you know, Saturday mornings, Monday to Friday, Saturday mornings. And my memory of Margaret, my first memory of Margaret was Boyd would have her in the office on Saturdays in the sofa. Now, I thought it was a pink sofa, but maybe it was a blue sofa. But Margaret would be reading books Saturday morning on the sofa. And some of the other partners would bring in their children, maybe not calls, but it was the most delightful, wonderful. Warm family experience, but boy, very much love Margaret and and Mrs. Frank, Mrs. Campbell. It was always Mrs. Campbell's dog, never Boyd's dog. But Mrs. Campbell had a dog, and it was, a boy would go buy a dog food. We, I know several of us would get in the um, the station wagon and we drive down to wherever we drove down and pick up this humongous bag of dog food for Mrs. Campbell's dog. <laughs> anyway, he was just such a wonderful. 
the wonderful mentor. Um, they had the client of the as, as I think Lori said, uh, a, a true trusted advisor. So privilege and honor, and uh, I miss him every day. Well, that was Teresa Brenner, and we thank you so much for that remembrance. That was fantastic. Others? All right. Well, Francis and Margaret, um, if I may say so, I hope you feel loved today. Um, I think we all are enjoying uh, mem remembering Boyd and what he meant to us and uh, what we learned from him and how we can plow that into maybe being better people every day going forward. So we thank you for sharing him with us and for giving us the opportunity to enjoy this time together today. Um, I can't imagine a better thing the bar can do than this, Mr. Kutro. I just can't. This is a remarkable tradition and I think it's fan fantastic. Um, so if there's not anything else, um, I will bring us to a conclusion and say that the court will order that the comments presented at this hour, eloquent as they have all been, be spread upon the minutes of this court and filed with copies presented to the family of our departed brother at the bar, Boyd Campbell Jr. Furthermore, the court will direct that the marshal adjourn this memorial session of court in memory of and out of respect for Boyd C. Campbell, Jr. Fear thee well, colleague, and Godspeed. Marshal, uh, adjourn this court in honor and memory of Boyd C. Campbell, Jr. All rise. This court is in recess until further notice. God save the United States and this honorable court. Thank you all very much.